Ah, Pokemon, the franchise responsible for making kids force their pets to fight each other in the hopes that they'll evolve since 1996. The pocket monsters have exploded in popularity since their debut in the Red and Blue games, with the series spawning clothing lines, books, and even aeroplanes to become the highest grossing media franchise of all time. The success of Pokemon is rooted firmly in the designs of its characters. Without the iconic looks of Charizard, Lapras, and Pikachu to draw original players in, there would be no Greninja or Lucario to marvel at today. But with nearly 1,000 different Pokedex entries, not every design can be elite. In fact, some of them are downright trubbish. To be clear, the following 10 designs aren't necessarily terrible. Instead, these are the ones that either paled in comparison to what came before, or which have one defining feature that rubbed us the wrong way. In any case, we've narrowed it down to 10 Pokémon who deserve to be blasted off for crimes against video game aesthetics. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and I definitely don't want to catch them all, because here are the 10 stupidest Pokémon designs of all time. Number 10. Golem As I mentioned, the problem with some of these designs isn't what they look like, but what they used to look like. Golem is one of the original 151 Pokémon introduced in the Red, Blue, and Yellow games. It's a rock-type Pokémon and the evolved form of Geodude and Graveler, both of whom have stellar designs. Geodude has long, muscly arms and a mean look on his face. Graveler takes this one step further, adding more arms and a sturdier frame. And then there's… Golem. Oh dear. Not only does it magically lose a set of arms, the arms that Golem keeps are much shorter, making it look like the creature would struggle to eat a sandwich, let alone do any damage in battle. Also, Golem is unnaturally spherical, as though someone stuck some limbs and a face on a crusty tennis ball. Round Boy doesn't even begin to cover it with this one. Whilst there's nothing that offensive about Golem's design, it is a massive letdown when you consider its previous forms, making you wonder why you even bothered to evolve it in the first place. Number 9. Cub Chew. Some Pokémon have weapons built into their design. Farfetch'd has its leak, Gerda has its metal beam, and Cubchu has its snot? No, seriously, what does it actually have? Oh, you weren't joking? Wow, okay, yes. Despite its tiny paws, adorable ears, and shimmering eyes, this lovely little polar bear cub is best remembered for the huge blob of mucus that hangs from its nose. This design choice is actually integral to Cubchu's personality. Its Pokedex entry states that, when this Pokemon is in good health, its snot becomes thicker and stickier. It will smear its snot on anyone it doesn't like. Note to self, don't annoy Cubchu when you've just had your clothes dry cleaned. Not only is Cubchu's design juvenile and frankly disgusting, it's also completely redundant by the time it evolves into its next form, Bear Tick. If the snot theme had continued, then perhaps we would have forgiven it, but the fact that this feature was included for seemingly no reason is what placed Cubchu on this list. Hang on, did I just advocate for more bogey-type Pokémon? Oh, let's move on before I do any more damage. Number 8. Ludicolo the final form of Lotad, Ludicolo will be familiar to fans of the Ruby and Sapphire series of the Pokémon anime in which one is owned by Brock. The Pewter City gym leader's Ludicolo can often be seen blasting off Team Rocket, dancing around and flirting with his owner's mother. I suppose you could call him a chip off the old Brock. <laughs> I'll see myself out. Unfortunately for Brock, his future stepfather is one of the silliest Pokémon of all time. From its goofy expression to its giant body to its weird oven mitt-shaped hands, Ludicolo just looks plain ridiculous, especially when you compare it to its counterpart Pokémon, Shiftry. Shiftry looks awesome, whilst Ludicolo looks like a creepy mascot for a theme park that was shut down by the government. You could make the argument that not all Pokémon need to look scary or intimidating, but considering that Ludicolo is a third-stage evolution, the designers had to have better ideas than this weird duck pineapple thing. Also, is that a sombrero? And if so, is that okay? It probably isn't okay, is it? Number 7. Sinisty if you ask someone from another country what they associate with England, they'll probably say the word T after the word colonization. Clearly, Game Freak thought exactly the same thing when they were developing the English-themed Pokémon game Sword and Shield, as one of the new Pokémon chosen to inhabit the Galar region was Sinisty. Sinisty is, and I'm trying to say this with a straight face, a haunted teacup possessed by a lonely spirit. If that weren't weird enough for you, then check out its evolved form, Polteigeist, which is you guessed it, a possessed teapot. Think Mrs. Potts and Chip from Beauty and the Beast, but with less singing and more shadow balling. The reason Poltegeist isn't on this list, despite its horrendous pun name, is because it's clearly a purple spirit living inside of an old teapot, whilst the teacup is actually part of Sinister's body. 
How the game expects us to believe that a perfect replica of a teacup can exist naturally is beyond me, and the fact that it was all done for a silly joke about the English makes this entry even less tolerable. It's put me right off my cup where it has. I'm just kidding, gimme, 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 gimme. Number six, Applin. It's an apple with eyes. What else do I even need to say here? To give Applin, another new addition to Sword and Shield, its credit, it's not actually an apple with eyes. It is, in fact, a tiny green dragon that lives inside of an apple to protect itself from predators. Ah yes, the tried and tested method of hiding from something that wants to eat you by disguising yourself as food. Despite having a fully rendered real form, players never get to see Applin outside of its fruity fortress. They can only see its full body after it evolves, either into Flapple or Appleton. I'm honestly not sure which of these is less pleasant to look at. It may just be a clever disguise, which in reality isn't that clever, but to the uninitiated, Applin looks like, well, an apple with eyes, and if that can't earn it a spot on this list, what can? Are we comfortable opening the door for a future Pokemon to just be a banana with ears, an aubergine with nostrils, a melon with realistic human feet? No, we need to nip this right in the bud, you. Number 5. Snom. Why we expected anything halfway intelligent from a Pokemon called Snom is beyond me, however I don't think anybody imagined that we'd get a Pokemon with its bum out. Before you go crazy in the comments, I know that that isn't actually Snom's posterior, I know that that is actually a pair of mandibles used to hang itself upside down at night to disguise itself as an icicle, but come on, this 100% looks like a booty. Whilst it is slightly easier to tell that Snom doesn't have its arse on display in the games, from a static image it is very hard to argue that Snom isn't trying to seduce us with its lovely lady lumps or man lumps. Also, if your bum starts doing this, then please consult a physician immediately. We may be the only people in the world who thinks about this when we see Snom, but once it's seen, it cannot be unseen. No ifs, ands, or buts. Sorry, I'm sorry. Number 4. Beldum. One of the best designed and most revered Pokemon introduced in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald is Metagross, a pseudo-legendary Pokemon that looks like those weird spider droid thingies from Star Wars after a really, really bad day. This beast weighs over 1,000 pounds, has one of the highest base attacks in the games, and was used to great effect by many characters in the anime. Even more impressively, Metagross evolved from this ridiculous looking thing. The first stage in the Metagross evolution is Beldum, an apt name considering that it has the word dumb in it. This piece of cast off Meccano looks about as threatening as a fridge magnet. It's not scary, it's not beautiful, it's not cute, it's just sort of there, like somebody was building Metagross and had some leftover assets that they didn't want to waste. Imagine if human beings started off as just a leg and then grew into a full person over time. That would be absolutely horrifying. Some people may find it quite poetic that something so unassuming can grow into such a formidable monster, but we here at Triple Jump hate poetry and will instead be laughing at Beldum as hard as we can. Number 3. Lilip and Cradilly. When Pokemon players revive the root fossil, they are rewarded with Lilip, the Sea Lily Pokemon. Lilip takes inspiration from real life sea lilies, or crinoids if you want to get scientific about this, which is a shame because sea lilies are really boring. Lilip is not the most, what, how should we put it, dynamic of Pokemon. It just sort of sits there, occasionally opening and closing its leaves with all of the enthusiasm of a pensioner shuffling to the shops to buy Lou Roll. Surely once Lilip evolves, it gets more interesting, right? Right? Unfortunately, trainers who slog it out with Lilip for long enough are rewarded with Cradilly, a slightly more exciting version of Lilip in the same way that watching paint dry is more exciting than counting individual grains of rice. Neither of these Pokemon is particularly thrilling to look at, especially when compared to their fossil counterparts Anorith and Armaldo. You can see why Game Freak never designed a Pokemon based on an extinct underwater plant ever again. We don't really understand why they did it in the first place, if we're being honest. Number 2. Vanillux. Vanillite, a Pokemon based on an ice cream cone, is a stupid design. Vanillish, a Pokemon based on a bigger ice cream cone, is an even stupider design. Vanillux, a Pokemon based on a two-headed ice cream cone with what appears to be a smoking wafer sticking out of the top of it, well, that's just the stupidest of all, isn't it? Pokemon players have always hated inanimate object Pokemon, and giving life to frozen foodstuffs was a step too far. The internet is full of articles about why people hate the Frosty Trio, and to be honest, we can't really disagree. The final stage of this line is definitely the worst offender. Vanillix's two heads and very silly facial expressions do not endear the Pokemon at all, and the fact that you have to get Vanillish all the way up to level 47 to receive this monstrosity makes us like it even less. 
The ice cream designs were ultimately too childish for longtime fans of the series and were seen as an indicator that the creators were running out of ideas. And yet, it's still not the worst Pokemon based on an inanimate object. That would be number one, Klefki. According to the Pokedex, Klefki loves keys so much that its head turned into the shape of one. I hope that doesn't happen in real life, otherwise I'll soon be walking around with a head shaped like a pizza. It's quite appropriate that this Pokemon was introduced in the X and Y games because why is the exact question players have been asking themselves ever since its design was revealed. Why does it love keys? Why did it need to evolve to look like keys? Why would anybody ever be interested in a Pokemon that looks like the sort of things that make you late for work because you lost them down the back of the sofa? Klefki is the ultimate example of the Pokemon creators literally making anything they see in their office into a Pokemon. Desk Pokemon? Why not? Carpet Pokemon? Sure thing. Lamp Pokemon? Well, you get the idea. For its unimaginative look and for insulting all of our collective intelligence, Klefki has earned its place at the bottom of the Pokemon design barrel. Wait a second, that's an inanimate object too. I swear, if there's a barrel-type Pokemon in the next one, Game Freak will be hearing from my lawyers. 